The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last, and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Oftentimes when I'm at uh, receptions or weddings or different things and it's time for the meal, they always try to have, oh, Father, you go first. I said, no, I know this scripture really well. He said, the last shall be first in the kingdom. So I said, no, I will go last because we want to be first in the kingdom of God. I can wait to eat. I don't need to eat so much. Some people say that if you want to make God laugh, show him your plans. Uh, Sometimes we have this set ways of things we want to do, maybe even in the day or in the next week, and all of a sudden life happens, and when you take a look at the end, you say, I don't know how much I ended up accomplishing, but where was God's hand in the midst of all of this? Well, the readings today invite us to reflect on how the Lord calls us together uh, and invites us to transform our lives into His. Yesterday, the parish pastoral council, along with uh, some of the pastoral team, spent a day of prayer in Grand Bend. During our year of prayer and conversion, uh, the entire pastoral team uh, went on retreat uh, one week ago, and then uh, the parish council, we had a beautiful day of prayer. We shared lunch together. Uh, We reflected uh, and just continued to build this team as we have new members of the council that just started their journey with us. And the basis of our reflection uh, yesterday was all focused in on the Eucharist. And we used a presentation from Father Robert Barron from Chicago uh, and reflecting on three main points that he offered. One, the Eucharist 
as a sacred meal, the second as the Eucharist as a call for sacrifice, and third, the Eucharist as the real presence. And he, uh, after each of these segments that he presented, we shared a bit of our own experience, of our own um, understanding of the gift of Jesus and the Eucharist in our lives, and the sense of how the Mass plays an important role uh, in the journey of our lives. And the readings uh, today invite us to, and it makes a really good connection with what Father Barron presented uh, to the council yesterday in these ways. Father Barron said that, of course, we gather together for this sacred meal. And throughout uh, the scriptures, from the very beginnings, God has worked through um, many, even from you know, working from Adam, to Eve, Adam and Eve to all the way to Jesus, throughout has been surrounded through the sense that we are being fed by God whether it's uh, Mount Sinai, whether it's the, the mountain of heaven described by the prophet Isaiah, whether it's the temple in Jerusalem, or whether it's here as we gather at the parish, all those ways God tries to gather us together for this sacred meal. And we gather those who are rich and poor, young and old, different parts of Byron or Lambeth or even different parts of the city in different situations and circumstances. And yet God, just like in the gospel reading today, the landowner goes out into the marketplace and invites everyone to enter into and to work in the vineyard. The gift of the Eucharist in this truly sacred meal, we gather together as one family. Diverse, unique in our own way, but we're drawn together. And it's important that we come together as one family, as much as it's important for our families, our own individual families, to have meals together. Not just maybe at Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter, but on a regular basis to come together and to encounter one another. And the Eucharist does that, and in that way, we encounter the Lord. And so the landowner was inviting those to work in the vineyard, not only to just do a job, but enter into this encounter with God. And so it's the importance of the Eucharist as a sacred meal. But also, Father Barron presented that the Eucharist is a call of sacrifice. We all come to celebrate Eucharist not just for the fun of it or not just to gather, but to change our ways. We come as sinners. We come as those that are trying to do our best, and sometimes you and I, we go along the wrong path. We go on the wrong track. And in order to celebrate Eucharist uh, most uh, excellently, as Father Barron says, we have to sacrifice. And what does that mean? We have to change our ways. As we heard in the first reading, the prophet Isaiah speaking on behalf of God says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. And of course, oftentimes we approach God trying to change his mind to be more like us, to have it our way. But the reality is, is when we gather together to pray, when we gather together to worship, when we come to the gift of the Eucharist, it's changing our lives to be more like his. And that's a painful thing. Because we're called to let go. We're called to sacrifice. And in the second reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, St. Paul does that. He says, it's not my life, it's God. I have to let go of who I am and let my life be in the fullness of Christ the risen Lord. And he understood that. Was that easy for him? Was it easy for the apostles who oftentimes uh, in the journey with Jesus says, listen, we've left everything for you. What's in it for us? What do we get out of it? And yet Jesus says, your reward will be given to you in your faithfulness. But to celebrate the Eucharist well, we gather together to seek change in our lives. Letting go of the past, letting go of our schedule or our plans, and seeking out and finding out what God has in store for us. Life actually is so much easier 
when we give God permission to take over our lives. But it's hard to let go. Yeah, when we do, when we open our hearts to him and seek him and say yes to him in his uh, journey for us, in his call to work in the vineyard, our lives are most fulfilled. And then finally, Father Barron said that, of course, the Eucharist is an encounter with the real presence of the risen Lord. And he quoted some statistics, but it, it, I, I don't remember them exactly, but he was talking about it in the United States, you know, between 70, 75% of Catholics don't necessarily believe in the true presence, thinking that the Eucharist is just a symbolic thing that we do. And yet, of course, the church teaches that when we celebrate Eucharist, when we come to Mass, when we receive communion, we receive the body and blood of Jesus, the risen Lord. And that makes a difference in, one, how we approach this celebration of the Eucharist, and secondly, how Jesus is called to change our lives. So that if we encounter him truly with open hearts and an understanding that Jesus is present among us to gather us together, to empower us to work in the vineyard, we certainly approach Mass differently. And that's one of the questions at the end of our day, after that reflection, one of the questions we asked ourselves as a parish council is, now that we, we, we take an understanding or we deepen our, our knowledge and our appreciation of the Eucharist, how does that make us different? How are we going to come to Mass this weekend uh, with a deeper understanding, with a deeper reverence, with a deeper appreciation of the generosity? Because in the Gospel today, Jesus says this, this is a, a parable to understand the kingdom. Those who worked all day from the early morning all the way till 6 o'clock at night. So they worked probably before 9 because the landowner went out at 9 and noon and 3 and then at 5. Those who worked all day got the same as those who worked from 5 to 6 p.m. In our eyes, they would say, this seems unfair. Of course, when we put ourselves in this story, we put ourselves as the ones that started really early in the morning. I don't know about you, but I'm not a morning person. We don't know what happened to the people who were called at 5 o'clock. Maybe they weren't in the marketplace. And yet at 5 o'clock they were called in and they answered the call. Those who were called last were very understanding of the generosity of the landowner. He was over generous. He paid them a full day's wage for one hour's work. And yet that is exactly how the kingdom of God works. The kingdom of God is first and foremost for those who are suffering those who are lost, those who are forgotten, those who have turned away, those who are in need. Those are the first in the kingdom of God. And hopefully in our humility, in some ways we find ourselves in that. And sometimes that we're lost, sometimes we're forgotten, sometimes we're sent to the sidelines, sometimes we're ignored. And yet those are the first in the kingdom. And for us who now work in the vineyard, those are the first people whom we offer the kingdom of generosity, of mercy, of forgiveness, of joy, of peace, and of hope. So as we continue in our Mass this morning, we recognize in all of these three readings an understanding of why we gather here. The Lord calls us together. He brings us together. The, the root word for the devil is to disperse or to scatter. That's what, that's what evil does. Evil scatters, divides. And what the Lord calls us to do is bringing us together as one. We gather together in this sacred meal. We recognize the fact that we're called to sacrifice, and that hurts, to change our ways to the ways of God. And finally, the gift of the real presence we truly encounter the Lord most, uh, most powerfully in the Eucharist itself, receiving his body and blood, but also in you and I as we gather in prayer. Why? To reach out to those in need, to express a great gratitude to God in our generosity to one another, and to make sure that everyone is invited to the kingdom of heaven.